Yeah. My team lost in the first round. How you guys doing today? Yeah. You guys are pretty amped up. You having fun? Yeah. How many of you guys enjoy being outside every day? No, no, no. What's a couple things you guys enjoy like doing outside? What about you? Softball and soccer. Basketball. Basketball. Football. Yeah, you name something different every time. Running. Skating. Rugby. Rugby. No jump rope, no tag, no hang and seek, no dodgeball. You're not five. <laughs> I play hang and seek actually um, until I was in high school, so I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> the lights are off at night and then it's dark and you can't play anything else really. Uh, so, obviously, there's a lot of, there's tons of things you guys can do obviously every single day. Um, from a physical fitness standpoint, it's essential that we have opportunity to get outside. I'm glad a lot of you guys actually enjoy being outside. As I can tell, looking around and actually watching you guys do these drills is pretty exciting and how excited you guys are about doing them and how much you guys actually are putting in effort-wise to doing the two. But uh, we got so many distractions nowadays when it comes to what? Different game consoles, the Xbox, PlayStation 3, <laughs> DS, computers. I mean, how many of you guys actually own a computer at home? I mean, all of us, right? When I was your age, I had no idea how to use a computer, really. I mean, to be honest, I didn't use it. I was outside 24-7. But nowadays, I mean, it's almost essential or some part of school now, most of the time, to uh, actually have use, use a computer throughout the day. And, uh, but obviously, you guys already answered the question. You guys like, all like getting outside. I just want to make sure that you guys know it's important to get outside 60 minutes a day, and that's what this campaign's for. And, and I, I stand behind it because, I mean, I figure nowadays, there's so many kids that really don't go outside. And some kids think weed's enough. How many think weed's enough? Fitness-wise, it's not. It's nowhere near enough. I mean, moving in the same area ten times, swinging your hand a couple times, bowling a little bit, it's not enough physical activity to really get your heart rate going and really stay healthy. I mean, healthy body is a healthy mind, and once you guys stay healthy, that's what we're talking about. How many of you guys like cleaning your rooms? None. You have OCD? Why don't you raise your hand? Then you don't like cleaning your room? <laughs> well. I learned when I was your age that anytime my chores were clean, I can do whatever I wanted to do after that. Because my parents hardly ever said no to me if they always were clean. You guys don't have to like it, but I mean, obviously obeying your parents is one of the best things to do sometimes, especially when you know that if you give them what they want, sometimes you can get what you want. It doesn't work like that all the time, but it definitely helps most of the time. Um, what else do we want to talk about? Guys, want to add anything in there? Uh, I'm not like Sucky. I'm not the talk kind, but <laughs> I will say you guys are some of the luckiest kids in the United States for one fact. You live in San Diego, California. Yes. And uh, if you were from where me and Suck you're from, you'd know that Midwest. being outside, being active is, is it's limited. It's a limited. And you guys have <laughs> the best opportunity here to do whatever you want to do every day. And um, you know, I just encourage all of you, if you don't like sports, if you you know, if you don't like a sport and then you know, get outside and go run around in the trees or something, you know, I used to go on a skateboard and throw rocks or something, I don't know, I was always outside and I never was inside until they did come out with like Nintendo or something like that, and I was playing that a bit, but, and I played that at night, but when, when it's daytime outside, go outside, have fun, and, uh, you know, eat right, do those kinds of things, because at the end of the day, uh, you know, you always want to take care of yourself and, and, and it'll always help you in the end. And then as this campaign comes to an end, we really appreciate you guys putting the effort. But just because the campaign's over, don't mean you have to stop going out 60 minutes at least a day. I mean, I know I was outside more than just 60 minutes, especially in the summertime. I mean, it was all day. When the streetlights came on, came on, and it was dark outside, that's when I came home. But other than that, I mean, we appreciate you guys. We'll open up for questions. He told you. You press some questions. Anybody have any questions for me or Gascar? Yes, we were both from Kansas City. He's from the Missouri Same side. Hometown. Missouri side, right? Kansas, Kansas, Kansas City, City side. Kansas. We're both from the Kansas City side of Kansas City. Or the Kansas side of Kansas City. Any questions? Yes. You get paid. Uh, <laughs> our salary is actually a little different because he was a rookie last year and I wasn't. And it goes up every year with experience. But we're not millionaires like most people think we are. But okay. Make enough. Enough. This is probably just a comment for all the Chargers. Just don't move to Smell Life. What's that? I can't hear you. Don't go. Don't move to Smell Life for all the Chargers. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. I don't want to move there. We don't want to move there. There's too much traffic. traffic. <laughs> <laughs> we don't want to be here with that too. at all. Anybody else? Yes. Do you guys enjoy all the fame? Do we enjoy the fame? Uh, um, we didn't get much. <laughs> we're still behind the scenes yeah. right now. <laughs> I'll leave that to like uh, Rick uh, and Phillips and stuff. 
I would say like this. It's a bittersweet thing. Uh, I enjoy it because I mean, both of us enjoy it because we're both we're pretty good. We're pretty good role models. And we're pretty good at watching what we do, and we're pretty good people as a whole. So I, as I would as I would think as I would say it about him, and in doing that, it's easy to have the spotlight on you when you do the right things at all times when you have integrity and character. But there, there's guys that may not hold true to the values that we might hold true to that where the fame gets in the way because they do great on the field, but off the field they're not as good of uh, upstanding citizens as they should be. So sometimes, yeah, it could, it could be a bad thing if somebody can't handle that fame. But I, I tell you guys now, fame doesn't change you if you know who you are inside. And it's one of those things to where you hold true to your values no matter what. You believe in who you are because if you don't believe in something, you'll fall for anything. And that's one of the biggest things that I, I'm sure that we both live out in our lives. You had your hand up over there. Linebacker or safety? We both play special teams. We both actually the number one tackles last year uh, on special teams. So. Yay! We actually were rivals in college. You in the back. <laughs> yes. Me, so on my third year, he's a rookie. Second year, going on my second year. I would not call him rookie anymore. Not a rookie. Well, I Thank guess the draft hasn't happened. Thank the Lord, so not a still a rookie. Yeah. <laughs> Back there. Do you guys like to play other sports other than football? I grew up playing baseball. I, I played everything, but I love baseball. <laughs> I love playing basketball. I still play basketball more than I play football. I'm all off season. <laughs> <laughs> um, what do you, do you, do you guys, um, Making fun of Rivers when he lost the game, you guys. At <laughs> no, it doesn't happen like that because I'll, I'll say it like this. I'll say it like this. As a, as as defensive players, maybe we should scream. It comes to a point to where yeah, the ball might have been in Phillips' hand at the end, but we put them in that position as defensive players because we didn't stop them from scoring. So no matter what you do, no matter how the game ends, it always is somebody else's fault leading up to it. He, he would never been in that position if us as a team were being more productive that day. It's never just one person's fault. Even if it's a missed field goal, it, it, it couldn't have been, he wouldn't have been in that position if we did, somebody else would have did their job and kept it from there. So we play as a team. So it's never us blaming. It's not about blaming each other. Yeah, you, because you can't ever worry about whatever someone else did because, I mean, Phil's one of the best quarterbacks in the league. Yeah. I can only worry about what I did at the end of the game. And, you know, I, I never played perfect, so yeah. I'll never blame anybody else for a while. And trust me, we both were excited last year when we both were on special teams yeah. and we can – I mean, it, it is, it's funny because we're not starting on offensive defense, but on special teams, the Phillip Rivers, the starters on the Weddles, the starters on defense, and offense come to us like, we need you on this, we need you on this. And like, it's it, it felt like we were more essential to the team than they were at times because they have 100 plays a game. We only have those 20, those, those 20 are always big plays. Because obviously, the biggest play in football is kickoff return for a touchdown or punt return for a touchdown. It's never just always a pass. That happens all the time. Kickoffs are always ones that are instant number ones on, or instant number twos on the top ten. Any other questions? Yes. When you were a rookie, did you, did anyone ever pull a prank on you? <laughs> yeah, good question. Every, every single day, rookie, rookie in the NFL is tough. That's fun. Stuff. Leave it at that. <laughs> it, 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 it's it's fun, harmless stuff though. It's nothing. It's very harmful. Pollution. Like they have to go get McDonald's yeah. or Coca. <laughs> um, I love baseball, and I played baseball more than anything growing up. And I was better at baseball than I was at football, but baseball didn't get full ride. Football did when I was in college. And that's what made my decision. Because <laughs> I, I couldn't afford to go to college any other way. I mean, I was in RPC, but either they just go to the military and have them pay for school, or play baseball and pay for half my school, or play football and go to college. But I played both sports throughout high school. And football offered, and I went running. <laughs> They're playing football. Right now, I think it might be a kickoff. Kickoff is pretty exciting. Who else you get? Play? I don't know. Back in the quarterback? <laughs> anytime, you get, anytime you get to hit somebody, I guess. The thing I'm most excited was. I'm the bat. Yeah. Stand up. What? How did you guys end up being football players? How did you end up being football players? I started playing when I was in the fourth grade. Um, and it was just fun then. Just pick up and having fun. And I didn't really get serious about football at all. I got to high school because I was one of those guys that played sports year round. You know, I was in urban Kansas City, so sports kept me out of trouble because um, a lot of my friends were doing the wrong thing. So I played football, basketball, baseball, I wrestled, and I also played 
soccer, so it was year round. I got a question. How many of y'all want to be professional baseball players, football players, athletes, anything like that? Skateboarders? Okay. How important is school and studying to achieve those dreams? Oh, man. Uh, you know, I mean, I was I, I was probably not a great kid in the beginning of my high school career. I, I didn't do the right things, and then, you know, and then I realized I wasn't even going to go to college with the grades I had, and then I, and people think when you get a scholarship for football, you can just go, go play football, but you have to maintain some grades. You have to get good grades, and then one day when they said, you know what, we want you to play football for Missouri, I, I was like, okay, and then, you know, I thought I was all good, and I, but then I realized, you know what, I can't get in if I can't get my grades up, because they weren't going to let me in, and I had to get my ACT score up, I had to do all these things, so I mean, you have to maintain grades, grades are number one, and when I got to college, I didn't even think I was going to play the pros, so I was main, I was completely worried about my degree, I, that's all I cared about was my degree, I cared about my degree, because I cared about the rest of my life, and then I got fortunate enough to play in the pros, I mean, so you have to care about your grades, number one, that's the number one thing. I think off what he said, one of the biggest things is nobody wants somebody that's not academically uh, successful to be a football player in college or in the NFL. Because if you can't study and learn your classroom work, which you've been learning basically the same thing for the last 20 years of your life, or 18 years of your life, because or how many ever years you've been in school, because I feel like school goes in circles, it goes in cycles. I mean, you learn English, 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 it's always the same subject all the way up. It's always the same core subjects. And if you can't put, if you can't study and learn that way, then how can you learn a playbook or how can you learn how to play with others? How can you learn to think for yourself? So education is key no matter what you do in your life. And like he said, football is not guaranteed for either one of us when we're in college. So we both knew that academics last forever. That's, that's your life after your sport or without your sport. Academics last forever. How do you